the body systems and homeostasis. So we're going to talk about how the different body systems help the body maintain homeostasis. So the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the excretory system, and the digestive system, and then how all of that connects to the concepts of diffusion and osmosis and active transport. So let's start with um, the circulatory system and the respiratory system. And these two systems work together to maintain your um, oxygen levels in your blood and your carbon dioxide levels in your blood as well. And, and these two systems are co closely connected um, all the time. And so we have your respiratory system, you're bringing in oxygen, as you know, and you're breathing out carbon dioxide. And you're bringing that air into your lungs, and then that oxygen is diffusing um, across the membranes from the alveoli in the lungs into the bloodstream. And once it's in the bloodstream, um, now it's part of the circulatory system. And it's getting pumped from the lungs back to the heart and then given a big whoosh and out to the rest of the body. And as it's going by all of the cells in the body, the circulatory system branches out and branches out into eventually capillaries that are so small that only one cell at a time can pass through. And the walls of the capillaries are, so, are very thin so that the oxygen can diffuse across from the high concentration of oxygen levels in the blood into the cells, and each cell is connected to at least one capillary so that the um, blood passes directly by that cell and can drop off the oxygen um, as it goes by. And as it drops off the oxygen, the oxygen, it simply diffuses across the membrane and into the, into the cells from high to low concentration. And the reverse with the carbon dioxide happens as the cell is producing carbon dioxide through cell respiration. And then that blood picks up the carbon dioxide and gets pumped back to the heart and given a, 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 a boost of a pump and to the lungs, kind of completing this figure eight motion, and then drops off the carbon dioxide into the lungs through diffusion and osmosis, or just diffusion. And then you breathe that out and that connects you to the ecosystem. You are connected physically to the ecosystem through the air molecules that you are breathing in and out. And so those two systems are working to maintain your pulse oxygen level. Um, a maximum of this is usually 97 to 99 percent saturation, meaning that your blood is carrying 97 to 99 percent of the capacity for oxygen, and that's where you want it to remain. And think about when you exercise now, you use more oxygen, and so your oxygen level should be dropping in your body because you're using that oxygen up because you're increasing the rate of respiration as you're running, for example. So how does your body respond to this? It speeds up the rate of respiration. It speeds up the rate of blood flow to bring in more oxygen to try and keep those levels constant. So your body is responding to always try and keep the oxygen levels constant by adjusting its activity level of your muscles and of your heart and of your lungs to try and keep that constant. So it's a, it's a good example of this negative feedback loop. Whereas the oxygen drops a little bit, that causes your body to pick up the pace and to breathe harder and to pump faster. And at some point, if you're ex exercising so much, you can't keep up anymore. And your body is running low on oxygen, and it needs more, but it can't get it. You can't breathe fast enough. And if you're still pushing yourself and exercising, you are now switching over to anaerobic respiration, and you're burning the glucose without the oxygen. And when you burn the glucose without the oxygen, then we know that it's much less efficient. You get way less ATP produced from each glucose molecule. So you have to burn a lot more glucose to get the energy to keep your body going. That's why you lose weight when you exercise at this level, because you are burning a lot more glucose than you might be burning if you were just sitting sedentary on the couch. Okay, so now let's add the digestive system and the excretory system to this mix. The digestive system is, is similar in relationship to the circulatory system as the respiratory system is. So 
um, the digestive system, you, you're taking in the molecules through your mouth and into your stomach and into your intestines. And in your intestines, then they are those molecules that you're taking in are passing through the walls of the intestine, either the large intestine or the small intestine, small intestine for uh, more of the food molecules and the large intestine more for the water. And so those molecules are passing out either through osmosis or diffusion or facilitated diffusion or even active transport and getting taken into the circulatory system. And then with each pump of the heart, those molecules are getting sent around the body and to the cells and they're then moving from the circulatory system into the cells again through osmosis or diffusion or facilitated diffusion or active transport and then the cells are sending out what it doesn't want into the blood and back into the circulatory system and now that blood is being pumped around the body and it connects to the excretory system and those molecules are taken and you um, you're either getting rid of solid waste through your bowels or you are getting rid of um, molecules as a part of the liquid waste in your urine and that's getting filtered through the kidneys. So we're going to focus on the kidneys here. So this blood runs through the kidney and it's like a big filter. And your body is trying to keep the things that it needs. So it, mainly it's trying to keep the glucose and the water and maybe the proteins and then it's sending out mostly the salts and things like that, though it's keeping some of those too. And this is also a negative feedback loop as well, because as your body drops in levels of water or salts, then that adjusts how much your kidneys will filter out and save versus how much it'll send out. And so you're, you're keeping those, those essential things you need as you need them, when you need them, and those go back into the circulatory system and then back to the cells again and then back around the system and back into the kidneys again and continues around and around and you keep this balance of sugars and, and salts and water and proteins in your blood and in your cells and the excess gets filtered out and into the urine and then out of the body and all four of these systems then are working together to take in molecules from the atmosphere and from your environment and balance those and keep those at constant levels and adjusting your body activities to keep those at the optimum levels and then breathing out the rest or getting rid of the rest as solid waste or as liquid waste and contributing those back into the ecosystem. So you are physically connected to that ecosystem all the time through these four systems.